So this is trying to kind of show you how the labs are formatted. So when you go into the lab folder, uh, this is assuming that you did the syllabus quiz. If you didn't do the syllabus quiz, we're well, not going to be able to see any of this. But hopefully by now we've all completed the syllabus quiz. And so in the density lab, you have a little bit of an explanation of what are the objectives of the lab. So we're determining density of regular and irregular shaped objects. Uh, looking graphically at the relationship between mass and volume. Measuring the mass and volume of liquids and solids. And determining significant figures and measurements. And this is the recommended order to complete the different uh, assignments. Uh, first, I'd recommend reading over the lecture notes and also watching the lab lecture videos. Then, as we'll see in just a moment, when you go to the Hayden McNeil Labs, they have background information. I would recommend reading over that as well. Once you do that, for this lab, we have a practice assignment, density calculations, uh, work on that. Then do the density uh, lab lecture quiz. And once you got an idea of the types of calculations you'll be doing, I would start the virtual lab on the Hayden McNeil side. Now, as we'll see in a moment, on the Hayden McNeil side, there's also an assignment for you to complete. And then once you do the virtual lab, then start on the post lab assignments. And so as you scroll down, everything's already posted. We have the lab lecture notes, the lab lecture video. I've already done a brief tutorial on the Hayden McNeil lab platform, but we'll also uh, do it again. We have our practice assignment lab lecture quiz and post lab question and notice that all of these are due on uh, Saturday at the stated due date. So with that said I'm going to go to the Hayden McNeil site and the way you access the Hayden McNeil site is by clicking on uh, the link over here and if for some of y'all that had payment issues they've they've corrected that problem so you can go ahead and process uh, make payment. So once you click on the Hayden McNeil site, it's going to take you to the what we call the Moodle platform. And the only one that you'll see right now is the density. There are two links for every lab. One is the lab manual, which is the green book link. And the other one has the check mark, which is the uh, lab assignment. So what you need to do is complete the virtual lab by clicking on the green book link, record your observations and measurements. And then once you've done gone through the lab, then click on the uh, uh, the assessment and complete that. And this is done on Hayden McNeil and is based mainly on the procedural aspects of the lab. You get one unlimited time attempt to complete that assignment. So what you want to do is you want to click on the green book. And it's going to direct us to the virtual lab. So the first one's on density. So the first page is typically the background information. So it talks about density, measuring mass, measuring the volume of a liquid, measuring the volume of a solid, and then a little bit about this lab. And when you go to the second page, here's the more of the procedural aspects of the lab. So the way we're going to la launch the lab bench is we'll click on this blue square when we're ready. But below the blue square it has the procedure for completing the experiment. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on the blue square and it's going to direct you to the virtual lab bench. So when you click Start Lab, it's going to ask what is the personal protective equipment you need. Goggles, lab coat, gloves, enter lab. And so the first shelf contains your materials. The second shelf contains any glassware that you may need. And the bottom shelf contains any instruments. So I'm just going to kind of run through how you use all these different uh, 
materials, containers, and instruments. But what you would do is you would click back on this tab and see what you need to do. Okay, step one, take the balance from the shelf. Step two, take a 50 mil graduated cylinder. And you would do that here. Now, the one thing you got to bear in mind is that it doesn't save anything. So once you close this workbench out, everything gets cleaned out, removed. So I'm going to start by just doing the density of a liquid. We'll just do water. So I'll get a 10 mil graduated cylinder. I click and drag the water to the graduated cylinder. Let's say I want to use 10 milliliters. And then it adds the water to the graduated cylinder. And so now if you double click, you see that the meniscus is right at the 10 millimeter mark on the graduated cylinder. So we have 10.0 milliliters of water. So I could have pre-weighed the graduated cylinder, but I didn't do that. So let me get a beaker. And here, if I tear the beaker, so the beaker weighs 32 grams, I'm going to zero it out. I'm going to pour my 10 milliliters into the beaker. Then I place it back on the balance. We see that 10 milliliters of water weighs 10 grams. So the density of water here is uh, one gram per milliliter. So if you're doing a liquid, this is how you would measure the density of a liquid. Now, to discard your chemicals, you have to click and drag to the waste container. Once you discard it, you can add them into the sink. So now I'm going to determine the density of iron. So I'm going to use a 50 mil graduated cylinder so I can do volume by displacement and a 50 mil beaker. And I want to tear the beaker. So I hit zero, it tears it out. Oop. And now I'm going to add my iron to the beaker. Now I wouldn't use too much mass of solid or too little. I'm going to use, let's say, 25, or let's go with 20 grams. And then I place the beaker back on the balance and I get the mass of iron is 20.00 grams. So now to do volume displacement, I need to add some water to the graduated cylinder. So I select my water bottle. And sometimes this happens. It gets a little stuck. I'm going to add, let me add it. Yeah, just move it to the trash. Yes, it's the same. Oh, we just have to reload. So if things like that happen, the best thing is to reload the lab. So we need our balance. 
graduated cylinder. We go ahead and add the water. So this is what it's supposed to do. Let's see, we're gonna add 10 milliliters of water. And then in the beaker, we're gonna add 20 grams. of iron. So I've zeroed out the beaker. You see we have 20.00 grams. So now our initial volume is 10 milliliters. What you can do is if you double click on the graduated cylinder, it zooms in and you see that we have 10.0 milliliters of solution. So that's our V initial. Now we're going to add the metal to the graduated cylinder. Click pour all. So now you'll see that the iron has been added to the graduated cylinder. So what we're going to do is if you double click on it, you see that now the meniscus is somewhere between 12 and 13. So I'm going to my estimated digit, I'm going to do a five. So the final volume is 12.5. So the volume of the iron is 2.5 milliliters. So now we have the volume of the iron, we have the mass of the iron, we can calculate the density. And when you get this, you get eight. But now we have to look at significant figures. The volume of the iron is two significant figures. So our answer would be two significant figures. Because when you're doing volume displacement, that's a separate process when you're doing the density calculation. So you first do the volume, that's separate. You get the volume of the metal, which has two sig figs. Then we calculate the density. Since the volume had two sig figs, our metal uh, density should have two significant figures. So I need to dispose of the waste. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but instead of using a 50 mil graduated cylinder, I'm going to use a 10 mil graduated cylinder. And instead of 10 milliliters, I'm going to put five milliliters of water into the graduated cylinder. So now we have the initial volume, five milliliters. We take a beaker. We're going to tear it. And we're going to add our 20 grams of iron. So 
So now for the second try, the mass of iron. And we have volume initial. Now for the volume initial, when I double click on the graduated cylinder, what you notice is that there's only five or there's five tick marks between five and six. So see here it's 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and then we have six. So since this is in 0 0.2 uh, milliliter increments, So the smallest increment is 0.2 milliliters. So the uncertainty is generally half that. So our uncertainty is 0.1 milliliter. So we would estimate it. Our estimated digit in this case would be the uh, tenths place. Even though it measures down to 0.2 increments, half of 0.2 is 0.1. So our estimated digit is going to be in the tenths place for this measurement. So that's why we record the volume as 5.0. Uh, milliliters. So then you take the iron you pour it into the graduated cylinder now to get the final volume of the graduated cylinder you double click you see here the meniscus is close to 0.6 so we have 6 7 7.2 7.4 7 7.6 again since it's in 0.2 milliliter increments our estimated digit is the tenths place so you can either if you think it's close to 7.6, you would say 7.6, or you could say uh, 7.5 if you thought it was between 0.6 and 0.4. So here the final volume is 7.6. And then the volume of iron is 7.6 minus 5.0, 2.6 milliliters. Now that we know the volume, we can find the density. we get 7.7 .7 grams per milliliter. So when we use the 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, we're able to determine the volume of, uh, of iron to be 7.7. .7. When we use the 50 mil, it was 8.0. So the 10 milliliter is a little bit better, but since it's in 0.2 milliliter increments, it's not as precise as if it was uh, a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder in 0.1 milliliter increments. And so that's how you go about using the uh, Hayden McNeil Virtual Labs. You click and drag, and then we need to discard our uh, waste, and we can add it to the sink.